Jesus. Be glorified in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's turn to him number 26. So page 12. Him number 26. Alas, indeed, my Savior bleed, and he my sovereign die. Would he devote the sacred head for such a warm as that? At the cross, at the cross, at the cross, where I pass all the lines. And the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Was it for crying that I had done? He groaned upon the tree. Amazing pity, grace unknown, and love beyond degree. At the cross, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith.
pray. Ask the God that you speak to us and feed our spirit man. Your word is food for our spirit. Music is beautiful for our soul. Food is food for our body. Thank you, Lord, because you're about to feed our spirit with your word. Let every one of us enter into another level of health by your word. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. You are crucified, laid behind the stone. You, know that my voice. you live to die, rejected and alone, like a road, trampled on the ground. You took the fall, you thought of me. Above all, you were crucified, laid behind a stone. You lived to die, rejected and alone, like a rose, trampled on the ground. Like a rose trampled on the ground, you took the fall, Lord. You thought of me above all. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you. You're welcome to this night's Bible study and Holy Communion service. We're teaching the word of God. So please alert everybody. Share the video and get everybody alerted that it's time to hear the word of God. Because the word of God is food for the spirit. It's food for the spirit. Can you make that camera work? Let it begin to work immediately. This night I want to teach on the topic growth in stature with durable riches. Growth in stature with durable. I'm not just talking about riches, I'm talking about durable. Durable riches. Proverbs chapter number 8. I'll read from verse 11 to 19. Then I'll describe what durable riches are. And we shall all open our hearts so that as we take today's Holy Communion, God will activate the chapter of durable riches in our lives. I don't believe in you just getting wealthy and after a while we forget you. The worst thing that can ever happen to a man is if the man was formerly rich, is a bad thing. It's not a testimony. Imagine you have lived in a house before, now you are living under the bridge. <laughs> it is not a good thing to be in the body. At old age, your life should be getting better, not getting worse. The Bible says better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. That's why we need durable riches. Proverbs chapter number 8 from verse number 11 to 19. The Bible says, For wisdom is better than rubies and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. The Bible says in verse 13, The fear of the Lord is to hate evil pride and arrogancy 
and the evil way and the forward mouth do I hate. Verse number 14, counsel is mine, mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding, I have strength. It says, by me kings reign and princes decree justice. Please put off your own volume because you're already hearing it live. I'm hearing that voice resounding somewhere. By me kings reign and princes decree justice. By me princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me and those that seek me early shall find me. Verse number 18 says, Riches and honor are with me. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yea, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. Now, wisdom began to speak and said, wealth is with me. He talked about things that are within me, shall find me. If you seek wisdom early, you'll find wisdom. But that's not where I'm going to. Wisdom said, riches and honor are with me. Then it is they said, yea durable riches and that's where i'm going to durable riches works with righteousness so what is durable riches when god causes you to grow financially in stature and it is durable that's what i'm talking about today i will not want you to grow financially in stature and you later vanish you grow financially in stature and you remain there not that later we don't see you anymore. So what is durable riches? Number one, it is riches that outlive more than one generation. That is durable riches. Wealth that you enjoy after you leave, your children continue from where you stopped. That wealth is durable. But if that wealth expires as you are expiring, it is not durable. What is durable riches? Number two, it is riches that enables you to achieve all that you ought to achieve in destiny. That is durable riches. The riches that enables you to fulfill or achieve all that God had created and manufactured you to achieve on earth. You finish it. That is durable riches. Many times people are wealthy but they are not able to fulfill all their destiny. Some of them die before their time. It will never be your portion. In the name of Jesus Christ. I mean, you see a rich man. He starts building a stadium. They are still at the foundation level. When they put one concrete, the guy has died. <laughs> He's building a mega house. Before they roof it, he, has, he didn't finish it. That riches is not durable. To never be your portion. Number three, what is durable riches? Durable riches is riches that empowers the present and the next generation riches that empowers the present generation and the next generation that is durable riches number four what is durable riches durable riches is riches that is ever increasing and never decreasing ever increasing and never decreasing that is durable riches ever increasing and never decreasing Number five, what is durable riches? Durable riches is riches that brings establishment and stability in life. Establishment and stability in life. That is durable riches. You are established, you are stable. Nothing shakes you. That riches is durable, sir. That is durable riches. Number six, what is durable riches? Rich, it is riches that gives birth to more riches. It keeps giving back to more wealth. That is durable riches. Number seven, what is durable riches? Durable riches is riches that does not destroy the owner. <laughs> riches that does not destroy the owner. I have seen people who riches destroy them. I haven't read it in my Bible. Ecclesiastes chapter number five, verse 13 to 15. Riches that destroy the owner. He is very wealthy and that wealth puts him in trouble. A certain man was telling me a story here one day and he talked about how he had a lot of money 
and he went to buy a contraband goods in Kenya. And they arrested him and they told him they were going to kill him or else he should forfeit what he bought. He forfeited. In fact, he said he gathered all his investment and put it to go and buy that contraband good. And he hid it somewhere and was selling it. If, if, if he finished selling it, he would have been very wealthy. But before he started selling it, somebody went to tell the government that he, was, he had that contraband good. They came to confiscate it and arrested him. In fact, they were taking the police station and some of the police were conspiring to kill him so they can collect the thing. So when he had, he ran for his life and left the whole money and that was how the money finished. <laughs> that is riches that destroy the owner. <laughs> he forgot it cheaply. Hey, before they kill him, he became very poor. He reported back to his village and was wearing slippers in humility before they removed his life and forgot the entire millions that he invested in, or else he would have gone. Fear moved him. Those are riches that destroy the owner. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 13 to 15. The Bible says, There is a sore evil which I have seen under the sun, namely, riches kept for the owners thereof to their hearts. Riches kept for the owners to hurt the owners. May you not have that kind of riches. Imagine you buy a car and that car is going to break your leg. While you are driving, you have an accident and a tree fell on the car and broke, remove your leg. If you never had that car, you never have had that accident. Riches kept to destroy, to hurt the owners of those riches. Now, everybody inside this complex should come inside except the person at the gate. Every human being inside this complex should come inside and sit down here. Including Mr. Two, tell him I said you should take his seat. It's not time to walk. It's time to hear the word of God. Please, sir, can you tell him, Mr. Fred? He should sit down on a chair inside. I'm obviously seeing his eyeballs sitting here. Uh, it's not time to walk. It's time to hear the word of God. Again, verse 14 says, But those riches perish by evil travail, and he begetted a son, and there's nothing in his hand. Imagine you are so wealthy. After you gave back to a son, uh, there, there's nothing to give your son. Your son has no inheritance from you. Is an evil kind of wealth. May you not have access to it. May God give you durable riches. The Bible says in verse 15, As he came forth of his mother's womb, naked, shall he return to go as he came, and shall take nothing of his labor, which he may carry away in his hand. I mean, imagine you came, you gathered wealth, you are rich, people are calling you a rich man, mukubwa, mukubwa, and you are, and by the time you are dying, you died empty. You died dry to never be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. May you never have wealth that will destroy you. Riches that will finish you. That's why I keep teaching. Get, if you must be wealthy, get wealthy in a righteous way. Don't get wealthy and you cannot sleep. <laughs> and you are opening one eye and checking what is going on. If cockroach move, you, you, you start pleading the blood of, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus. Just because a rat moved. Because the riches are, were ill-gotten. I'm talking about durable riches today. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 11. Ecclesiastes chapter number 5 verse 11. The Bible says, when goods increase, they are increased that eat them. And what good is there to the owners thereof, saving the beholding of them with their eyes? Ecclesiastes, they were asking us a question. It, it says, when good things increase in your life, increase those who are eating it. In fact, if you don't increase them, they will come on their own. <laughs> so when goods increase, they are increased that eat them. How do people know when you have money? Have you noticed that when you have money, many more people will be telling you of their need. Not, you, you won't announce it. How many of you go on KT and I say, Bleh. I want to announce that I'm now richer than I was last year. Nobody does that. It has never happened. It will never happen in Kenya. Not, if, not even in Kikuyu land. Does the Kikuyu say when they have money? No, 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 no. For what? They don't say it. Even when they have money. They won't tell you. You will not even know the guy has money. You will wear a torn t-shirt and trousers that have holes. And you won't know the guy is a millionaire. <laughs> and they just be passing and be laughing at with you. And you think the guy is a poor man. It's not though. Now, how do people smell it and start increasing and their demand on you? 
The Bible says when goods increase, when good things increase in your life, people just naturally increase that eat them. They will just be coming. Then the Bible says to us, it says, and what good is it to the owners thereof? Saving the beholding of them with the eyes. You only be looking. See, no matter how rich you get, remember clearly that you cannot eat four plates of food. Hmm. Let them give you all the meat. You will catch disease. You eat. After a while, you will not be able to swallow it again. You can never eat more than you eat normally. No matter how rich you get. Remember clearly. Have you ever seen any man who got rich and he wore like five clothes at once? He wore five jackets. And he came out because he's rich. No, Mr. Two, have you seen somebody like that before? <laughs> they want to show that he's very wealthy. He wore three shoes. Three. To show that he's not your level. It can never happen. You only wear one shoe. No matter how rich you are. The Bible says only the beholding of the wealth. It makes you happy when you see people eating from your money. You say, wow, praise God. And you're happy about that's all. You can never increase the, the, the bed you sleep. If you like, make your bed bigger than this church. You will sleep in one corner. <laughs> when sleep, why are you? You will not know when you just corner. And the whole place will be empty. Same place where you slept, the size. The same size you sleep when you are rich. So understand that it should not destroy you. May God give you durable riches that will help you affect other people on earth positively. So you are happy when you see people eating from your wealth. I am happy when I see people walking and I know I'm going to pay them. At least whatever I pay them will help them eat. I'm fine with it. Let them do the work. I am happy when I see someone serving and then I know if I pay this guy it will be well with him. It's better for me. Be happy when people serve around you and you have capability to make sure that there's food on their table. Be happy. Why will you be sad and you don't want to pay them their wages? It is wrong. It is wickedness. Bible says in Proverbs chapter 1 verse 19. Proverbs 1 19 says, So are the ways of everyone that is greedy of gain, which taketh away the life of the owner thereof. Greedy of gain. When you want more gain than necessary, it will take your life away. You are a foolish man. Stop being greedy of gain. It says, it takes away the life of the owner. Greedy of gain. What you should gain 500? You want to gain 50,000. And you think you are cheating people. <laughs> it will take away your life. The day your disgrace will come. It will come very cheaply. The Bible says again, it says in Proverbs chapter 13 verse 11, he says, wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished. When you get wealth through a dubious means, it will vanish. It will disappear. Nobody will see it on you. Wealth gotten by vanity. Can I have all the versions of the Bible? Then I will show you how to acquire wealth. Then I will tell you the power of Holy Communion. As soon as you take Holy Communion, you move to another level of wealth in the name of Jesus Christ. Proverbs chapter number 13 verse 11 says, this honest money doing it doesn't last this honest money doing those away when it money dishonestly it will just can i have another version of the bible again another version says wealth from get rich quick schemes quickly disappears wealth from get rich quick schemes let us do Mr. Two and the other guy and collect some extra money. It quickly disappears. It will never last. You will soon fade. Can I have another version of the Bible again? Another version of the Bible says, the more easily you get your wealth, the more, <laughs> the more easily you crack brain, use dubious means you get it, the sooner you will lose it. The faster you lose it. Don't acquire wealth in a dubious way. So pay the price to get wealth. And then may God give it to you and let it be durable in the name of Jesus Christ. All of you see me here. Put down my life. Pray every day. Settle down here. No running up and down. No calling of the governor or the senator. 
looking for him, running up and down, lying up in his office from morning to night. They tell you he's not available. He's very busy. Then he comes out in an arrogance and says, okay, I will see you later. And you are there for three days. It will never happen to me. It's better I stay in God's presence and wait on him. For they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. When you get wealth in a dubious way, you will lose it very quickly. It does not last. Now, how do I get wealth? If the answer is this. It, the harder it is to earn, the more you will have. Go back to King James Version. It says, But he that gathered by labor shall increase. When you gather wealth by labor, you will increase. So, one of the ways to acquire wealth that can be durable is hard work. Hard work. That is why I don't joke with those who work hard in this complex. I see them. I mark them. This one works hard. I want this one here. I don't want a lazy person who wants to get money cheaply. But he that gathered by hard work, gathered by labor, shall increase. So hard work is the first key to get wealth that will increase and stick with you. Proverbs chapter 28, verse number 20. Proverbs 28, verse 20. The Bible says in Proverbs 28, verse 6, A faithful man shall abound with blessings, but he that maketh haste to be rich, he that maketh to be rich shall not be innocent. How do you get wealth that will stay for a long time? By being faithful. By being faithful. What does it mean to be faithful? Truthful. When you say the truth the way it is. And not play games. Being faithful. When they give you money to buy the material, buy the material, don't spend it. And pretend. And come to collect another one. Be faithful. When you tell them it is 20000 that the material costs, buy the material. Don't come back and change it. Don't do it. Be faithful. When they verify, let, it, let them meet it as truth. Not when they verify, they discover you are a thief. You are not faithful. You can never gather durable riches by being unfaithful. You will soon be poor again. You will forever beg. That is what happens to those who are not faithful, who gathers wealth by unfaithfulness. Proverbs chapter number 10, verse 22. Proverbs chapter number 10, verse 22. Proverbs 10, 22. The Bible says, The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he added no sorrow with it. See your Bible. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he, God, does not add sorrow with his blessing, sir. It is better to get that blessing that will make you rich without sorrow than for you to get the blessing that will make you rich with sorrow. The Bible says many rich people suffer from sorrow. A lot of sorrowful things happen to them. Many rich people. When you get wealth in a wrong way, it will add sorrow with it. You will have different kind of problems added to it. Sorrowful things will be happening to you. Sweet things will never happen to you because you got it in the wrong way. Get wealth in the right way. Get it in the right way, sir. Cool down. The blessing of the Lord is the best that can give you wealth without sorrow. I prefer it. I wait patiently for it. I am happy waiting, sir. I am not preaching to toast you. That's what I do. I waited patiently before I got to this level, sir. I was not in a hurry. There were many schemes to get to make it quickly in Kenya. I did not follow it. Many people have suggested things to me. Let us go to Lagwaja and make some noise here. Let's support this political man and prophesy into his life. He will give us like five million. We share it. Or ten million. Let us go. I refuse to. I prefer taking it step by step until I get here. Excuse me, sir. It is the blessing of the Lord that make it rich and remove sorrow from it. But another kind of blessing, you will be rich, you, but you will have a baptism of sorrow by immersion. All kinds of problems will besiege you. While you are walking on the road, they will break your leg. You are driving a car, they will seize the car. All kinds of sorrow will be saying hello to you. It's better to stick with God 
and let him give you the blessing that make it rich and added the sorrow that is the power of blessing always provoke especially men of god to bless you that's how blessings come on people's head provoke them to bless you do something that will make a man of god charge and speak into your life always do it i do that regularly <laughs> And that is why no evil can befall me, sir. Number four, the fourth way to get riches. Proverbs 8, 18. This is wisdom speaking here. In Proverbs 8, verse 18. Wisdom is speaking. Proverbs 8, 18 says, Riches and honor are with me. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. This is wisdom talking. So, how do I get durable riches? By wisdom acquire wisdom acquire wisdom acquire wisdom it gives durable riches the bible says in proverbs chapter 13 verse 20 i want to show you how to acquire wisdom proverbs 13 20 the bible says he that walketh with wise men shall be wise so one of the fastest ways to get wisdom is associate people who said that correct who are wise stop working with it says but a companion of fools shall be destroyed when you see this person's head is correct <laughs> connect yourself there <laughs> i do that regularly sir i hang out around wise men of fools Watch me check all those of these people that look for me there are those that look for me and they are my friends and there are those that look for me for me to pray for them most of you that work here you see them you will never find a fool among them. <laughs> he who works with the wise shall be wise. But the companion of fools shall be destroyed. Be careful who you are working with. Who you are working with determines what happens to you. <laughs> determines what happens to you. Well, I have... I don't know what I touched on my iPad. It has changed. Uh, Brother Felix, please come up here. How do I reverse something? <laughs> it has rearranged my iPad. Come up. Sir? No, I touched something. It said paste or something. The thing just changed the shape. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. Hey, chai technology. <laughs> Thank you very much. Wow. Okay. I've just learned that one now. No, today is not Thursday. Don't put Thursday there. Go ahead. Today is Tuesday. Always be smart when you are doing such things. All right. I touched something on my iPad. Sorry for those online. I touched something on my iPad and it's rearranged. So I needed somebody who knows better than me in that area. I can cast that level, but I don't know this one well, like that guy. So, <laughs> so that's his area. Hallelujah. And so, wisdom gives you durable riches. Wisdom wisdom connect with those who are wise number two ask god for wisdom the bible says when you ask for wisdom and you don't doubt you will get number three go for impartation when you see a man of god with wisdom ask the man to pour wisdom into to impact you with wisdom the bible says to us moses laid hands on joshua and joshua was full of the spirit of wisdom from that day forward that should be the tribute of the 39 or something like that the guy was loaded with wisdom. When you see somebody that when he talks, the things are, are very powerful. Things are working around him. Connect yourself around there. If he's a man of God, tell him, pray for me, please. I refuse to be a fool. Pray for me. And he prays for you. He's impacted into you. Wisdom is highly necessary for you to be rich on earth. For you to have durable riches. All right. Ephesians 1 verse 18. Number 5. The fifth way to get durable riches. Ephesians 1 18. Ephesians chapter number 1 verse 18. The Bible says, The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling 
and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints riches of the glory of his inheritance number five the fifth way to get wealthy that will be durable is through inheritance inheritance either from your father or from your spiritual father inheritance now listen many children run after inheritance and they kill themselves before the inheritance comes and then some people run after inheritance after they get it they sell it off because they don't value it yes i'll see they will collect the whole land and they will sell the land <laughs> and you see them squatting but their father was formerly rich may you not have a foolish son in the name of jesus christ inheritance can make you wealthy if you already have enough wisdom to manage it you will become wealthy number six ezekiel chapter 27 verse 33 ezekiel 27 verse 33 i'm talking of durable riches i don't like it to be that you were lifted before and you came back down it will never be your portion in the name of jesus as you take today's communion god will give you durable riches you will grow in stature in wealth in the name of jesus christ all right ezekiel 27 33 the bible says and we and when the the well went forth out of the seas then fillest thou many people thou didst enrich the kings of the earth with the multitude of thy riches and of thy merchandise and of your merchandise multitude of thy riches and of your merchandise how did they get the riches through merchandise what is merchandise buying and selling trades through trading through buying and selling through business having a sharp business mindset not being laid back alive concerning business not dubious having a sharp business mindset hallelujah praise god see when i see people like i i calculate them can this guy make it yes how what do i do to help him make it then i begin to pray father show me what few people that i have pushed and they have allowed me push them they have succeeded just a push and when i'm pushing i push you seriously because if you succeed it is to my own good see if you are poor you'll be a burden to me whenever you come and what is it? My, my wife, my wife. What is wife in Kiswahili? Huh? B. Baby. My baby, my baby. And they say, what is it? I say, they have not eaten. You have become a burden to me. So I prefer you succeeding under pressure. I will push you to succeed. Because by the time you succeed, I will be fine. You also be fine. We'll be talking on a good wavelength. When I'm talking, you'll be understanding me. Not when I'm talking, you'll be calculating. Look at his shoe. He's wearing a fine shoe and I'm suffering. It, am I the one who made <laughs> Did I end it to suffer? When I wear some good clothes, you're angry. You are swelling up. When I'm saying, uh, have you done your work? You're wondering, uh, he's wearing good clothing. Why should I give you clothes when your brain refuses to work? If I get hold of you. Are you understanding what I'm doing? So it's better you hang around those who will push you so that you can use your brain, get into merchandise and succeed. Stop hanging around those who give you hand, hand down. Is that what they call it? Hand, hands down. They give you some chicken change. Muse, muse, muse. Holy muse. Righteous muse. The guy is a sinner. He's not righteous. <laughs> but you are healing him because of 500 shillings. When he gives five, he says, ah, Abariyako. <laughs> Abariyako, you are very happy. The next day he comes, we say, we say, stop that nonsense. Why don't you hang around those that can push you and your brain will produce a million? And you have your own personal car. You build your house. Hang around those that will switch you on, that will push you into merchandise, that will make you use your brain, sir. I mean, every member did not do that. I will push you so hard until you succeed. If I notice where you are, what I do, push you until you rise. You know, I remember Pastor Dennis' story. In the early days when he joined World Juniors, he was a student at the University of Nairobi. They will come. He will trek with few other students and they will come to my meetings to come and hear the word of God. And they will trek back. And in those days, I used to preach very long. Am I correct? <laughs> I will preach at 9, 10 o'clock. I'm still preaching and downloading. 
When I finish, they will start trekking back to the campus. One day, his fiancée came to hint me that Dennis have not been sitting for exams because some sickness used to arrest him the night before exam regularly. So presently, he has fallen out of school. Huh? Sickness? Okay, fine. So I sent for him. He came. Oh God, what happened to him? He said, eh, he's not going to school anymore. He has many carryovers, this and that. I said, all right. Go back to school. Did you hear what I said? He said, yes, sir. Then I said, if you refuse to go back to school, don't come to this church anymore. I remember he looked up at me. It was like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> so I gave him out. Go back to school. The grace I carry will sustain you. Except I don't have grace. I came out with the best result in my university. So go back to school. If you don't want to go back to school, don't come here. And I was not talking gently. I was shouting on him. He left. He was a normal Kenyan that time. I know when he was leaving, he was not bold enough to do it in my front. He did it on the way. <laughs> he would have done it on the way. On the way. Ah, what's wrong with this pastor? What concerns him with my education? The guy left. For like one week plus, I never saw him. So I asked his friends, where is he? He said he's angry. Because I fired him to go back to school. And he's been having it difficult. And I said, the grace I carry will stand. Okay. After some days, I saw him back in church. You have returned? He said, yes. Why did you return? <laughs> he said, I've heard what you said. What did I say? I should go back to school. Are you ready? He said, yes. We shall go back to school. And he went. He went and he arranged school. Went back and pleaded with them. Wrote letters. Did this and that one. They reinstated him. And he started going to school. And I prayed for him. I asked him one day, why did you listen to me? Why? Because... I knew you left me angrily. You wondered who is this pastor that is forcing me to go to school. Must I go to school? That you are doing PhD. Does that concern me? Why did you return back? He said he was angry. Yes. That how, how can this pastor be shouting on me? But he said he taught it. When I graduate and they gave me a certificate, it is not this pastor's name that will be there. It's my name. I, this pastor must have meant well for me. Let me go back to this guy. Since he said the grace he carry can help me, let me go back there and see how this grace will help me. Today is a graduate. He has many other certificates. He's a manager somewhere doing well because he went back to school. Somebody pushed him to go there. Sir. Pushed him by force. Sir. I told him, don't be a member again. I don't want to see you anymore here. That's all. Are you on the going? You need such people around you. He, he, I remember in those days, when he comes, he will tell me, sir, I need house rent. I will gather some money and give him. I need house rent. I, I, I'm not giving you again. <laughs> but now I don't know how many people's house rent he pays. He pays his own and pays and sorts many people out. Why? God has sorted him out. He's not a burden to me in any way whatsoever. He doesn't disturb me. Not when I see him and say, hey, prayer point has come. No way. <laughs> there are people when they appear, prayer point just came. Mm, prayer request. Uh, uh, sir, can you find me something? You know that is the final an analysis of their manifestation around you. No way. When this guy appears around me now, there's no prayer point. It's thanksgiving. It's testimony. Are you understanding what I'm talking about? May that be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. Hang around those that will push you to making it by yourself. Not those that will give you change and keep you a slave around. Hallelujah. Praise God. What other thing can make a man succeed in life, prosper, and have durable riches? Ezra chapter 6 verse 14. Ezra chapter number 6 verse 14. Ezra 6 14. I'll give you this. I'll give you one more point, And I'll show you the power of communion. And I pray on the communion everywhere on earth. Where people have connected to us online. It will come to pass that as you take the communion, God will activate wealth in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Number Seven, that's where we are now. Ezra 6, 14. The Bible says, And the elders of the Jews builded, and they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai, the prophet, and Zechariah, the son of Edo. And they builded and finished it according to the commandment of the God of Israel, and according to the commandment of Cyrus and Darius and Atasazas, king of Persia. The Bible says, And they prospered through the prophesying. They prosper 
through the prophesying. They prosper through the prophesying. Listen carefully. Prophecy can make you prosper in a durable way. Prophecy. When someone carries the anointing, speaks into your life. <laughs> it can change the tangent of your destiny to prosperity, sir. They prosper through the prophesying of the man of God. They prosper through the prophesying. Always provoke men of God to prophesy, especially those that you know carry the anointing, sir. They prosper through the prophesying. I remember many years ago, there used to be a member of this church. Somebody took his land. He came to me and lamented. He took his land. He wanted to go to court. Sir, what do you think I should do? I closed my eyes. God said, tell him not to go to court. Sir, don't go to court. He said, no, no, no. I, want I said, relax. I'm hearing my ears. Don't go to court. He said, in my inheritance. I said, forget that inheritance. Don't let them kill you because of the inheritance. Dash them the land. God will give you a better place. He said, ah, amen. Let it happen fast. He went away. When he came back for the next service, he said, sir, did you say I should not go to court? I said, yes. Are you sure God spoke to you? I said, yes. He left. The next time he came again, sir, you are sure? I said, ah. So I said, now don't ask me again. I have spoken. He said, okay, I'm sorry, sir. He went away. So we left it that way. Few months down the line, he returned. He said, there is a prime line, land, not too far from where they stood from me, but in a very prime location. And the, the owner needs money urgently, and they are begging me to buy it at a cheap price. What do I do? As I close my eyes, God said, that is the answer. Tell him to buy it. I said, buy it. The man disappeared. I went, bought it, came back and told me, I have bought the land. I was so happy with him. Praise God. Praise God. Suddenly, he came back to me and said, some developers want to help me. The developer, we, as we were joking, I said, okay, go ahead. As he went, within nine months, he built 48 machinates within nine months. As he was building it, the who is who in this area began to rent it before they opened the 48 machines were already occupied what helped him was the prophetic grace i remember one day before that period came i called him and said you stand up and he stood up i said follow me and he followed me a shy man he doesn't like public he followed me then i stopped i said stop and go and buy key holders so what did you say? Go out of the church and go and buy key holders now. So he ran. He ran. He went to buy key holders. He came back. He brought five. I said, my friend, get out and get more key holders. He said, but you didn't tell me the number of key holders. <laughs> I said, okay, I'm not joking with you. Out of the time. Go so he ran again. He brought key holders. I shouted again. It's not enough. Huh? Boy, you didn't tell me the number. I said, Buy all the key orders that is in the place. But because time is already gone, I will speak over the 26 key orders. When they got the 48 machinates, the key orders were not enough. You need a prophet around you, sir. Somebody who doesn't understand the way normal people understand. You need that kind of person who can understand something that others do not hear. One young man walked up, one of the young men that fellowshiped here, Boniface, he walked up to me and said, Sir, I've been having difficulty in marriage and I want to marry. I said, All right. I just finished preaching. I was walking down the ass. He said, I want to marry. He said, I brought this seed for you so that me. And then the yoke can be broken and I'll get married. I looked at him and had the voice tell me, tell him to drop the money on the floor. So I said, He looked at me, he held the money well. On the floor. How? On the floor. He said, I was afraid. So he dropped it there. He was looking at me. Father, answer him. I command your wife to appear in the next one month. In Jesus' name we pray. And I left the money. I walked away. One usher was I said, hey, usher, pick up that money and put it in the offering bag. And I walked away. Ah. He said he was wondering, what kind of mad pastor is this one? Is this guy okay? Money. Money. Pesa. He said, you put on. <laughs> he said he went to another pastor. As soon as he gave the pastor money, the pastor collected his and counted it. <laughs> They came. I told him to put the money on the floor. I told him to put the money on the floor. He never knew what I was hearing. His problem was ancestral. That seed and sacrifice he brought, I wanted, as I saw it, God said I should use it to disconnect him from ancestral forces holding him back maritally. And ancestors are in the ground. <laughs> but he did not know. I only shouted at him, drop it on the floor. Eh? Drop what on the floor? He finally obeyed. He's married now. His wife is also a pastor. 
and he's doing well. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. You need something beyond normal. If you must get wealthy and the wealth will last. I was in Ghana for a meeting. After I finished preaching, another pastor was also in Ghana. He got very happy with me and got interested. So we started talking. He took me to his hotel. While we were talking, he called other pastor friends of his. And they were all talking. And I kept quiet. I was watching them. Because I don't know them before. So I kept quiet. I was watching them. So after a while, they asked me what to say. So I spoke. Eh? When I was speaking, a lot of them were looking at me. One of them looking very clean, well dressed, got interested in me. He said, I want us to be friends. I want you to be praying for me because when you spoke, something told me you pray. <laughs> the man of God said, hey, This one is he pray you. Over prayer is worrying him. He just loves praying. He said, Please, I want you to stand with me. He said, In fact, tomorrow I'm coming to your hotel. I said, No problem. The next day he came. He sat down. He said, I have met with who is who around the world. He started mentioning names of major human beings on earth that control wealth. He said, but I discovered one thing, that there is none of them that does not have a force, a power that backs them up. Each of them have a shrine they go to or a god they run to. He said, I have discovered that if you must be in the realm of some wealth, you must have a covenant spiritually backing you up either with God or with the devil. He said, sir, I want you to stick with me because... I know I will make it. I know if you pray for me, I will explode into wealth. Like all those I'm working with right now. He said it's a privilege. They also bring me around. They talk with me, but I don't have the kind of money they have. Hi. I said, all right. I prayed for him. He left. But the thing he said, stuck to my brain. If you must enter some realm of wealth, you must operate in some covenant. You need a covenanted place. A, an altar to be fighting for you. Not just quick, quick, quick. I said, na fana, na na monso. Amen. Hi. Okay, you believe it, Edu? Prayer have gone beyond Nafana. <laughs> How do you guys do it in Kenya? Nafana na wana monso. How do you guys do it in Kenya? Eh, Nababa did what? Eh. Nababa na. Say it well. Now, why are you afraid? Nababa. Mwana. Romo Takatifu. <laughs> okay, pray at that level. Now, Father, I'm going to also. You need to buy your prayer <laughs> and locate war that will change your life. Because the demons are attacking you. They are from Kogedo. They are not taking it easy with you. <laughs> they are not young devils. They are elderly, sir. They are senior to the Mau Maus. <laughs> <laughs> so understand they're not joking with you. You need a forceful aggression to enter new realms. And that happens in the prophetic realm. That happens in the prophetic realm. Some of you sometimes you discover that when I speak, especially with force, everywhere is charging. That's the voice. That's you need somebody that's ag that will hit the thing aggressively. Believe him now. And they say, hey, so I've left him. That's what you need. Not the one say, please, devil, leave him. Say, devil say, no, I'm not leaving him. He's my own. <laughs> leave him. Hey, you need somebody who's, you need aggression in the place of prophecy to set you free under pressure. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Are you understanding what I'm showing you? And then I'll give you one more key. If you want to be extremely rich, you need the spirit of excellence. Excellence. The Bible says in Daniel chapter 6 from verse 1, Excellence. Do things well. Don't do things haphazardly. Do it neatly. Very well. Very well. I mean, I love this pulpit because when I saw it online, I told the guy, deliver to me before I pay because I want to see whether it's what I saw online that you deliver. And the guy delivered it neatly, exactly the way I saw it online. Excellent. That's what I want, sir. Not when he came. Eh. Hi. You are not explaining. The reason why is because there was no party. <laughs> or God do it well. Excellence makes people wealthy. The Bible says in Daniel chapter 6, from verse 1, it pleased Darius to set over the kingdom and 120 princes, which should be over the whole kingdom, and over these three presidents of whom Daniel was first. Why was he first? So that the princes might give account unto them, and the king should have no damage. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. So Daniel, uh, over the whole realm. Let's go to verse 28. 
He had an excellent spirit. Let's see what the excellent spirit gave to him. Verse 28 of the same Daniel chapter 6. Now verse 28. There was a, so this Daniel prospered. So this Daniel prospered. I why he had an excellent spirit if you want to prosper have an excellent spirit do things well don't do things in a haphazard way do things well Ex add some little extra to what you do make it finer than usual polish it a little bit more let it shine a little bit more add more than what others added that's what they call excellent spirit that's what they call excellent spirit. So Daniel prospered. And then one more key. For you to have durable riches, take Holy Communion regularly. Take Holy Communion regularly. I want to show you the dangerous part of Holy Communion. Just two things I want to show you. Number one, whenever you take Holy Communion, especially when you take it regularly, Every wealth that God had given to you that is hanging will land into your laps under pressure. Every wealth that God has given to you that is hanging will do what? Land into your hands fast under pressure. That is what the Holy Communion does. How did I get that? The Bible says to us that the children of Israel were in Egypt for 430 years and they were not paid salary as slaves. The night they took Holy Communion, Pharaoh paid them their salary that night, 430 years salary in one day. So understand what I'm talking about. They collected 430 years salary in one day after they took Holy Communion, sir. <laughs> Slaves became king in one night. Why? Communion, Holy Communion is a secret, sir. That is why the Bible says you should not take it unworthily. That's why the Bible says you should not take it in sin. You must not go and fornicate and now come and do both ways and think will not see your face. God have known what you did. You stole some money and you came and you're doing like that and you're collecting it. Or a guy to not work for you, to attack you. When you take it with a clear heart, with a clean heart, it will cost everyone that is owing you, including those you don't know. The people that collected the salary were not the people that they started owing. Their forefathers have died many generations. But these people that ate communion collected their forefathers' salary. 430 years salary. One day. One day. Exodus 3, 21 to 22. You find it there. Again, number two. When you take communion regularly, it will make you wealthy permanently. As soon as they pay you, that money will start increasing. You become wealthy. The children of Israel got to the wilderness. God wanted to build a church like this church that we are building. They had enough to build it. The Bible says Moses told them to bring offering. They brought offering in the wilderness, in the forest. They were moving in the bush. Moses had to say, okay, we have enough offering. They were still bringing it. Moses had to say, if you bring offering again, we'll drive you away from this church. No more offering. <laughs> I like that kind of church. Imagine the church. You are begging people not to bring offering again. Anybody that brings offering in this church will be excommunicated. Are you understanding that kind of church? That was the church of Moses. They were so rich in the bush. They were not working. They were not doing exchange. They were not trapped. They were in the forest for 40 years. When Moses called for an offering, they brought offering, brought until Moses said, the announcement, they had to tell Moses to make that announcement special because priests have been begging. People refused. Moses has to say, I have an announcement. Everybody, please, we want to announce that we have enough offering. Please don't bring offering to this church again. If you bring offering to this church, we are going to excommunicate you. Hey. So people say, okay, fine. We don't want to leave the church. That's what happened in the church of Moses. Why? God gave them durable riches. By the time they got into Canaan, they entered Canaan very wealthy. By the time they got into Canaan, they entered very wealthy. See, listen, there's a new level coming. That's why you see me doing the conference I am doing in the, in the next one hour. I will start the conference. The one I'm speaking on Zoom. God said there is wealth transfer. Wealth is changing hands this season. Between now, December, January, this wealth will be changing hands. Changing hands. Some people will be rich before will become poor. Some people who are never rich before will become rich. Wealth is changing hands. That's what is happening this season. When you take communion the right way, God will mark you 
give you transgenerational wealth. May God remember you. I think I've taught enough. Through of us. Have you understood? I don't need to teach some more. In the early days, before, I only did introduction now. I'm just beginning the teaching. <laughs> By to 10, I will not be checking where we've reached in the spirit realm. Somebody told me that he went somewhere and the pastor was preaching. Within a few minutes, the pastor had been preaching. That he thought the pastor was still introducing. Hey, the service have closed. I, I think I need to go back home. <laughs> My pastor we teach us until we are full. This one, I just did rehearsal. I said, no, don't compare me with that one. It is because of where I came from, you know. When uh, you pass through some hard things, you must be loaded with heavier stuff. So that's what happened to me. All right, I want us to pray right now. Father, as I take to this communion, give me durable riches. Give me my 430 year salary in one day. Where my forefathers could not enter, I must enter there. What they could not have access to, Fire prayer wherever you are. Remember me. I ask for durable riches. I ask for durable riches. Ikaduka brakado sahanda le kadusha. Re kabakado se gadon telita. Ye kadega de gabragadu shigadu sahande. Mare kalaga da gabragado shigadu se telita. Yoga doga 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 doga. Oria kataka bragado shigadu sahanda. Mare kataka bragado. You may rise to your feet, please. Rise to your feet and pray. I don't want temporary blessing. I don't want temporary riches. E kataka bragado shigadu sahanda. I don't want temporary riches. I do not want it temporary. E kutu kapala nda la bragado sahande lete. My kalaga da gada. I don't want temporary blessings. I don't want temporary blessings. I kosege lege dege bragado shahanda li katusa. Ori ya kalaga da gada gada. I don't want temporary blessings. Tell God I'm a hard worker. I'm a hard worker. It must be well with me. I work hard. I serve. Lord, I am faithful. I am faithful. I am faithful. Hear me, O God. Remember me. I Tell God I am blessed. I am blessed and I will be a blessing. Lord Jesus, remember me. O Zeka Laga Lagadaga Ragaraba. My son Tala Bragadusha Garusata. Eko Toko Bragadon Teliga Rusha Handa Likata. O Zika Laga Dagadaga Ragaragaraba. Mare Kataka Bragadosha Garusete. Oria Kalaga Ragaraba. My son Taliga Rusha Hagadogora. Oria Katagaraba. My son Kalagaraba. Eko Toko Bragadosha Garusaha. E Kadagaragaraba. My Rokataka Bragadosha Garusete. Eko Logodogodogodogodogodogodogodogodogodogodogodogodogodogodogodogodogodogodogodogodogodogodogodogodogodogodogodogodogodogodogodogodogodogodogodogodogodogodogodogodogodogodogodogodogodogodogodogodogodog
Lord, change my life by prophecy. Change it by prophecy. As the prophet speaks over my life, let my life change. Change my life by prophecy. Allah pragadusa handa. Mareke legede gedegede. Eka lagadaba. Oreka taka bragadoshe gadusa. Eka taka lagadaba. Oreka legede gede. Eko logado gadaba. Masoka lagadaba. Eka toka gadaba. Ask for the spirit of excellence. Enter me now. Excellent spirit. Excellent spirit. Enter me right now. Mas. Kapanda la bragadoshe garusata. Thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, we pray. Everybody say, Amen. Now take your seat. I will speak to your life on your seat. Everywhere you are, take your seat. Everywhere. Thank you, Jesus. I release the anointing now. Let it work for you as we take this communion right now. You will never beg for bread again. I command a change of life. Open your hands like that. I command, open your hands like this. I command a change of your life right now. I speak as a prophet over you. Today marks your turning point. If you believe it will work for you. If you don't believe it, you will see it work in others ahead. So you can know it is true. I prophesy into your life right now that today marks your turning point. Today is your turning point. Today is your own turning point financially. You will start rising to fall no more. You start going high. Your sun will never set again. I prophesy directly into your destiny. You will never go down anymore. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Almighty God honors this word that has spoken into your life and causes it to be well with you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Everybody say, Amen. All right, you have the blessings on you. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to give our offerings. After that, I'll bless the communion for those online. And then I'll bless for those here. So get out your offerings. Give your offerings right now. After you give your offerings, if you're at home, get your communion elements out quickly. I will speak from here. And the anointing will touch it, sir. It will activate durable riches. I will be happy to see you blessed. I'm always happy to see my members blessed. I'm so happy. The other day, one of our members took me to go and bless aircraft. I was so happy. That's the kind of thing I want to be blessing, not wheelbarrow. Wheelbarrow. A blessing. <laughs> a blessing, wheelbarrow. Ah, eh, bless aircraft, bless some good cars, not eh, eh, we just wheelbarrow. Aye, we are past that level to never be your portion. <laughs> In the name of Jesus Christ. So get out the offerings and fire your offerings. You can use the Empesa pay bill 821430 and it will reach us by the grace of God. You can use send with app if you're outside Africa and it will reach us by the grace of God. So go ahead. Use any medium or method that is easy for you, depending on the on your geographical location. If you're in Nigeria, you should have the Nigerian account. Go ahead, use it. Fire in your offerings and it will work for you. And then you need the church account to pay your tithe or anything. Take photograph of the account number on the screen. And it will work for you also in the name of Jesus Christ. Do not delay in giving your offering. Don't be stingy and say, Aye, the church is blessed. Let me hold back. You are holding back your blessings. The more you give, it is more blessed to give than to receive. So go ahead, give your offering. It's more blessed to give than to receive. So give your offerings so you are blessed. All right, I speak over every offering right now. I declare blessed every giver, those who are paying tithes, those who are sending seed for the building, those who are giving all kinds of offering, I declare you blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. May God multiply the offerings. Wipe away your tears in the name of Jesus Christ. And as we take to this communion, God activates the grace for durable riches in your life. So shall it be. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. All right, you can step forward and drop your offerings. You can step forward, drop it. those who have it physically. If you don't, give it electronically. But make sure you also pay your tithes. If you, don't, if you hold back your tithes, you are holding back your blessing. You remain where you are. <laughs> Others will be moving forward in your presence. We see them riding bicycle. You see them riding bigger, better cars. You will still be trekking. You remain where you are. Uh, hold, your, hold it in. You remain where you are. But you see others improving right in your presence like this. You see the world working wonders in their life. So don't join that group of, hey, and let us be careful here, and so on and so forth. All right. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. So I believe you have done your offerings. From wherever you are, send your offerings. From any part of the world, it will reach us. So just follow the links. 
and God will bless you mightily in the name of Jesus Christ. All right. Now, I want us to get the communion. So, those online, get your communion element ready. I'll speak to it right now. And the Almighty God will bless it and put upon it grace for you to enter into the seasons of durable riches in the name of Jesus Christ. All right, get it ready, wherever you are. I declare what you have with you, the body and the blood of Christ, in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. As you take it, it activates in you grace for durable riches in the name of Jesus Christ. For I have received of the Lord that which was delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same man also took the cup, when he has stopped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go ahead, take your communion wherever you are. And as soon as you take it, begin to pray. Father, switch on durable riches in my life right now. Make me a giant in durable riches. Go ahead, pray. And as you pray, pour out your heart before God until you are satisfied. Then you can now close. The Lord God Almighty bless you. See you again on Thursday for the prayer riot in church. God bless you. Have a wonderful night. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever. Amen. God bless everybody online. See you again on Thursday. Bye-bye. Pastor Dennis.